live and in color. Hey everyone, it's Shane, aka Captain Kryptonite. So today I'm going to be doing a video on the cast of Superman and Lois. I got my coffee. Hopefully, you have your coffee. It should be a good one. I'm going to talk about the cast. Starting with Tyler Hecklin. This guy's appeared in Supergirl a couple of times. I believe he's also in uh, Crisis, Infinity Crisis, I believe it's called. Uh, I tried to watch that. Not very good. It was with, I think he was in a fight with uh, Brandon Ruth. Terrible, terrible. I'm glad I didn't watch it because if I had watched that before I watched Superman and Lois, I probably wouldn't watch it. I'm um, not a big fan of Supergirl. I tried watching a couple of episodes and it I don't know lost me flash is okay here and there but I tell you just before the show Superman and Lois the TV show comes on I watch maybe the last five ten minutes of the flash I have no idea what's going on no idea and that's sad because you have to watch the entire series just to get an idea of what the heck is going on who reverse flash is and all this kind of stuff this one character which I think is the reverse flash keeps dying and showing up and all this kind of stuff so ah, too complicated too complicated and then we have arrow which I kind of wish they had called it green arrow because that's what I grew up on was green arrow and he was a great great character so they changed it a little bit but it's okay I watched a couple episodes didn't hold my attention but Superman and Lois is a whole different game ladies and gentlemen this TV show is amazing and I'm gonna go through the cast so we have Tyler Hecklin who plays Superman I think he's doing a fantastic job where does he compare with Christopher Reeves and all these others boy it's pretty close I would put him right at the top with Christopher Reeves um, it's act actually working for him even when he plays Clark Kent and all that kind of stuff you actually like his character quite a bit and um, the thing that I always appreciated about the character of Superman is that he is moral he has morals and he has a code and the idea is that he's not supposed to harm anyone he's not supposed to kill anyone that's what Batman does. Although Batman's not supposed to use a gun. That kind of goes against everything he believes in. But I think he can cross the line. Superman is not supposed to cross the line. Ever. So. Hopefully. Uh, we don't see him make mistakes like that. And killing people and all that. Because then you kind of. You lose. You lose me. That's one reason why I think the Man of Steel went wrong is they had Superman kill General Zod he's not supposed to kill anyone and I get it like he's using his heat vision he's gonna melt someone but if you think about it Superman had him in a headlock and Zod is like I don't know how their heat vision works but if you're holding my head still I could still do this I could fry everything just like that just by doing this so I don't understand how holding Zod's neck like this doesn't allow him to fry that family but anyways that's just me that's just nitpicky you can't you can't really be nitpicky with a guy that flies like let's just be honest here I remember reading one comic as a kid where Superman was so strong, 
he actually pushed a planet pushed an entire planet I don't know a lot about physics I wouldn't consider myself a physics expert but if I were to go to the ground and push it as hard as I could and put enough force to move the earth I think I'm gonna go through the ground just saying just saying I know there was a rule basically how Superman can lift heavy objects is once he touches the object it becomes a part of him and he's able to move it that's the best way that I know how to explain it so he can lift a plane without crushing it because if you think about it if you grab a plane and you're trying to turn it around you're just gonna rip that piece of metal because that metal is not stronger than the force that you use on the plane so you're gonna rip a hole in the plane and cause it to crash so that's how they get around the whole physics and they don't really explain it but if you see Superman lifting a bridge that's why that's why he could lift heavy objects it's because once he grabs onto something it becomes part of him because when you think about it in the last episode perks the perks of not being a wallflower Superman was lifting a bridge to stop it from landing on a Chinese fisherman theoretically if he went to catch that bridge the bridge should have collapsed around him and there should have been just a little hole where he push the bridge up and everything else should have collapsed but that's not how it works with Superman so anyways you're, you're being educated on Superman right here so let's talk about Lois Lane who kept her name even though she married Clark Kent she kept her name Lois Lane doesn't work excuse me doesn't work at the Daily Planet anymore. She quit. Superman doesn't work at the Daily Planet. Or Clark Kent does not work at the Daily Planet. He's unemployed. Excuse me. I should get a Kleenex. For some reason. I think I'm a little bit lactose intolerant. I've got too much cream in my coffee. Anyways. So they're unemployed. Which kind of mirrors a little bit of what's going on right now with uh, our economy in North America anyway and I guess around the world people are laid off let go downsize all this kind of stuff so she now has a job at the Smallville Gazette Gazette not cassette Gazette and uh, I'll be talking about another character that she works with I actually like what they're doing with Lois Lane I think right now she has some very interesting development uh, character development they're doing a good job with it she's that independent uh, thinker she likes to do things on her own and all that kind of stuff she doesn't like to always rely on Superman but let's face it when she gets into trouble that's when Superman springs into action so it's good there's lots of good scenes especially in the perks of not being a wallflower there's one scene where she's in a hotel and uh, she takes on this giant guy and I can't remember his name it's like K11 or something Ash or I don't know I guess Ash is Elon Musk's kid it's kind of a weird name Ash 10115 or whatever I don't know what Elon was thinking but anyways she battles this guy that kind of reminds me of Nod from Superman. He's got superpowers. He's just as strong as Superman. And the only way Superman was able to defeat him was to get a little bit of super creative. And I think that's one of Superman's powers is being super creative. So he did a little bit of a wrestling maneuver where he would go on one side, hit the guy on the other side, hit the guy, and then basically throw him into a nice little clothesline. <clears throat> That was great. And then Frozen. That was a good maneuver. That felt like a video game, which is awesome. Because I would totally use that move all the time. Where you freeze the guy, like Sub-Zero, and you TK him. That wasn't me giving a, one of these. It was me 
giving it an uppercut. So I think Lois's character has room to grow, room to develop all this kind of stuff. But right now, I give her, I give her like an eight out of a ten. She's one of the best Lois Lane so far, to date, and I uh, really like her character. She's played, of course, by Bitsy Tullock. Let's go to Jordan, Alex Garfin. We are not sure about this guy. He's got superpowers now. We don't know how strong he is. He actually joined the football team in the last episode. We found out in the pilot. So if you're watching this, I guess I should have said there's going to be some spoilers. But with the TV show, you pretty much have to follow it from the beginning. Otherwise, there's going to be spoilers everywhere. And I think that's why you want to watch the show because you don't want to... It's not like a movie where it's a little bit more difficult. People make movies that will go spoilers and non-spoilers and stuff. But for some reason in TV, people can't wait to get stuff out. They just can't. So I remember after watching, uh, I believe it was the end of Heritage, we see Superman with his heat vision. Bad guy Superman. And... Uh, I'm glad I watched that episode because if I had watched a review on YouTube, I would have saw that, oh, there's a bad guy, Superman. It would have wrecked it for me. So if you don't want any more spoilers, then I would strongly suggest that you go watch something else. <laughs> but if you don't mind this kind of thing, it's cool. We mostly on this channel mostly talk about Superman and Lois because it's probably one of the best TV shows there is out there today so uh, Yeah, so Jordan we find out he's got some superpowers He's got a bit of a temper. He's already used that oct octocular vision heat vision Once and uh, He was threatened another time and you could see him clenching his fist and I'm like, uh oh uh Oh, you got to get this guy out of school He's going to lose control. Now let's talk about John Kent. Now in the comics, John flies. I was almost 100% sure Jordan Elsass, character Jonathan, was going to show us that he could fly. He's a great character right now. They're basically building up these two brothers. They're twins. Jordan, Jonathan. Jonathan is the one that's always thinking on what's right and what's wrong. He's like Clark. He's like our modern version of Clark without the superpowers. I thought he had superpowers because he threw a football through a rope and broke it. And his parents were looking at each other like, Oh, did you see that? So... I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're going to play it up a little bit later. But right now, as of today, Jonathan does not have any superpowers. Jordan is the one with the superpowers. But Jonathan's character is very interesting because he's always defending Jordan. He's like the conscience of Jordan. So I like his character. Uh, I really like the character arc on this. It'll be interesting to see how he progresses i'm telling you this is probably the best tv series in a long 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 time you tell me another tv show that you think is good and i'll i'll put this right next to it i think it's phenomenal now you could say like the sopranos were good but the show's not playing anymore it was good in its time so i'm just saying that today i think this is the best tv series out there there's so much room for them to develop all these characters. So let's talk about Lana Lang. Emmanuel Shrichi. Shrichi, I believe is how you say her name. Um, Lana Lang used to be a love interest with Clark Kent when he was in Smallville. Now she's married. I think her name is actually Lana Cushing, which is she's married to Kyle Cushing. Which we will talk about his character uh, in a few minutes. But I like her character. I like it. She uh, 
She works at a bank. She volunteers at the school teaching cheerleading, which I assume is because she was a cheerleader when she was young in Smallville High School. So that's kind of cool. And her daughter Sarah was a part of the cheerleading team. We'll talk about her a little bit later. But her character... There's a bit of a mirror going on where Clark Kent has two lives. So he's Clark Kent by day and by night or whenever else. He is Superman. Whenever he takes off, he's Superman. So they play off of that a little bit. On the outside, Lana looks like everything is cool. Because in Smallville... You're taught to just smile at problems and all this kind of stuff and kind of have a phony exterior. But on the inside, her and Kyle aren't doing so good. Kyle sleeps on the couch, sits on the couch, all this kind of stuff, watches TV by himself. She goes in another room. Their relationship is not, it's, it's fragmented. The kids aren't doing good. Uh, Lana's been on drugs here and there and that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, so it's she's got interesting, a, a bit more of an interesting development as well. So let's talk about Indy Navarrete, Sarah. This is Sarah Cushing. This is Lana and Kyle's daughter. Sarah is actually befriending Jordan and Jonathan, which is kind of cool. Jordan got in trouble because he kissed her without knowing that she had a boyfriend that was her fault I think she led him along and he almost melted the whole camp he's got a temper got a temper so her character is interesting as well we know a lot about her and uh, it's like like each character has layers which is what I really like but almost I'm trying to think but I think right now Superman is maybe the weakest character and I don't mean that in a negative way I just mean we don't really have we have a little bit of conflict within himself because he's having to teach his kids and that but I would really like to dive into his emotions on how he's feeling because he's invincible and the problem with Superman and writing a good story with Superman is he's he could be boring because if you have a character that is invincible nothing phases him you gotta put some obstacles in his way that make him think make him vulnerable without without punching him like a superhero like a super villain you don't always need a super villain to match him to go toe to toe with him because that that could get boring after a while so what you want is you want Superman to have problems whether it's at home with the relationships all this kind of stuff you want him juggling a bunch of things maybe it's General Lane maybe they have a fallout that kind of stuff maybe he doesn't trust Jordan and the superpower so that that actually starts helping the story move along you start building some depth around the character of Superman and I think that's how you do it you build you put family members in peril you make them not get along with him whether it's whether it's people in the town whatever it is because Clark is an easygoing guy he could be considered boring if you're not careful Superman can be boring if you're not careful there's ways to do it so let's talk about Chrissy Beppo Sophia Hasmak I believe she's Armenian uh, her character's yeah, it's a brand new character. It's kind of interesting. She's with the Smallville Gazette. She owns it. And now Lois Lane works for her. So, that's kind of interesting. I like that. That is pretty cool. Then we have... So, we don't really know a lot of her backstory and all that. We just know that she likes to write. And she owns uh, paper. A small town paper so let's talk about Kyle Eric Valdez Kyle Cushing 
his character is kind of interesting because at the beginning he was kind of a jerk especially towards Lois Lane and his character is becoming more interesting to me because he's a firefighter so again we have a little bit of mirroring here's a guy that rescues people full-time that's his full-time job and then you get Superman that does it full-time but does it for free basically doesn't charge anything I think maybe people should be charging him for all the buildings that he's destroying but that's another topic on its own but Kyle I think he's a guy that actually he has some power as in he's got some pull in the town he's on the city council he's a fireman all this so people trust him and I think he is in a position where he can actually evaluate what's going on around so he was trusting Morgan Edge I'll talk about coming up shortly but because Lois is bringing up all these accusations and stuff I think it's starting to produce a little bit of doubt in Kyle Cushing about Morgan Edge so I'm thinking that either he's gonna turn around and see Lois's um, perspective and then maybe he can help her out who knows I think he's an interesting character to watch then we have General Sam Dylan Walsh I believe he was also in Supergirl I think or another episode with Superman and Lois Lane so he's an interesting character as well I like I like it uh, right now we don't really know much so his character is a little bit I won't say shallow but they haven't really focused on this character and I think in the next episode Haywire we get to see a little bit more of General Sam so we'll see we'll see how that goes so General Sam now I like I like this character so far in Heritage Captain Lex meets up with him and I noticed that Captain Lex didn't kill anyone he just used shock waves knock people down but I don't think he killed anyone which is interesting apparently in another earth another world General Sam and Captain Lex were comrades so that's interesting and I think Lex put some doubt in Sam about Superman because he hasn't destroyed your world yet but he destroyed my world so we need to figure out something and he gave him a dog tag in the shape of an emblem of Superman it's interesting I think S Sam now has doubt about Superman and we're gonna see it a little bit more in each episode maybe the season finale will be Lex and Sam working together to defeat Superman I don't know maybe it's too soon for that but I can see that coming I can see it coming Superman isn't always doing what Sam wants him to do and Lois is like he has a family he has to deal with these kids you are wanting him to do missions all around the world so I think there's a bit of conflict with Lois and her dad so that's interesting that'll be neat to see so let's talk a little bit about Holograms, Angus McFadden, Jor-El. They've only showed him once. He's an interesting character as well. Uh, obviously, Angus McFadden, Robert the Bruce. Uh, it's kind of interesting how they introduce him as a hologram. Obviously, he's an artificial intelligence. We kind of understand how that all works he's basically like a glorified library and Superman can interact with his dad so that's kind of cool kind of reminds me a little bit of Ben Kenobi with all the wisdom and all this kind of stuff and they're trying to check out Jordan to see if he has any superpowers and it was almost like the Medichlorians in Phantom Menace I always thought it was uh, not so much genes but it was what the Sun was doing to Superman that made him so strong and 
obviously if you um, have a wife that is an earthling then your powers are going to get reduced but for some reason in Jordan things are progressing a little bit different than Clark was used to Clark had his superpowers I'm expecting a little bit more linear whereas Jordan it's random heat vision and then super strength and maybe one day he'll be able to fly so who knows let's talk about Lex Wall Parks Captain Luther I think this guy has maybe the most potential so we get introduced to him in the pilot and then obviously heritage he does not show up in perks of not being a wallflower the third episode maybe he'll show up in the fourth one kind of look like maybe he's got a new suit or something so we'll see we'll see so hard to tell but I, I think the potential is great I know in I think it was the last son of Krepton uh, Superman the last son of Krepton it was a cartoon came out I don't know about 20 some years ago um, Lex Luthor was black in that one so it's kind of interesting that they're using a black character I I think it's great I think Will Parks pulls it off I'm interested to see how he develops his character how the writing is all that kind of stuff and he is a man on the mission I actually appreciate his character because the bad Superman destroyed his world so he has a purpose and we can actually relate not relate to that but we can buy in as long as a guy has a motive doesn't matter if he's good or bad if he believes in it his cause it's easier for an audience to buy into it but if they're conflicting all the time it's it's very tough so captain luther is on a mission to get general sam on board so that they can destroy superman in our world and I'm still thinking that that evil Superman is going to come to our world. There might be a Superman versus Superman fight. I don't know. Hopefully, not. hopefully, I don't know what to say on that one. Because I saw Superman, Tyler Hecklin Superman fight Brandon Ruth's, and it was the special effects were terrible. So what I noticed in the perks of not being a wallflower, the special effects at the beginning were a little bit. They weren't as good as the first episode, the pilot. And they weren't as good as Heritage. But I also understood that coming into this, that it's not going to be, the budget isn't going to be there for all 15 episodes. And we basically have two more to go, and then they're taking a seven-week break. So we'll have episode four, episode five, and then a break to the middle of May. And then they should wrap up by the end of June. So, so who knows, this little seven week delay could build things up because then you get to rewatch the show again and again like i said i've i've watched the pilot four times i've watched heritage three times and i've watched uh the perks not beat a wallflower twice it's better or it gets just as good watching it again and again excuse me so let's talk about morgan edge adam rayner so we have bad guy. I guess he was in the comics. I don't really know too much about this character, but in this TV series, Superman and Lois, he is actually uh, buying up, I think, land, property, all this kind of stuff. And he was involved in another town, and I forget the name of that town. But according to Lois, this guy is up to no good. And Kyle Cushing is saying, if he's bringing jobs, how can that be bad? So we have a little bit of conflict there. But after watching Perks, we realize that Morgan Edge has an accomplice, and that is none other than Stacy Farber, Leslie Lar. Whoa, how come I don't have here? There we go. <laughs> so Leslie Lar is a Kryptonian. And in the comics, she was from Kandor, a city that was shrunken down by, I think, Brainiac and put into a jar, a bottle. And that's where the city of Kandor is. 
she's from that world she's a kryptonian and in the comics she actually kidnaps supergirl and takes over her role as supergirl and she becomes like evil supergirl everybody's like oh what's this supergirl doing how come she's so bad it was actually lastly lar mimicking supergirl with all her superpowers all this kind of stuff she wanted to replace supergirl which i find it fascinating that they have her in this tv show so superman's gonna have a match she kind of reminded me of the female Terminator in Terminator 3. I forget what her name is. With the leather outfit and all that walking down the street. Kind of reminded me of that scene. Uh, but yeah, she fried this uh, this big uh, Nod guy or whatever he is. Maybe he's a Kryptonian. I don't know. But she fried him. Took care of him. And uh, that character is gone. The one that Superman fought in the hotel, he is gone. I don't know what his name is. Maybe it doesn't matter because we'll never see him again. But now we have a new bad guy, which is Leslie Lar. So that's kind of cool. I like it. So there we go. That's that's basically it for uh, today's episode. Hopefully you get a little bit of a snapshot of the cast of Superman and Lois and uh, if you if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing I would greatly appreciate it and then also check out the TV show Superman and Lois like it is amazing 